So our team used a new method to date craters on the moon. And we did this by looking at the rock abundance that surrounds craters. So when you look at the moon in temperature, what you find is that big rocks, big rocks stay warmer through the lunar night than sort of the background dirt and other things you have. It's sort of like going to the beach, right? If you stand on the sand in the sun, it's very hot. And then as night goes down, the sand gets cool very quickly, but the rocks stay warm through the night. So you can use temperature as a way to tell you how many rocks exist on the moon. We found that fresh craters or young craters have lots and lots of rocks surrounding them. And some craters on the moon have been dated by rocks returned by the Apollo astronauts. So using that information, we came up with a way to date craters all across the moon by their rock abundance. And from those ages, we were able to get really interesting results on how the rate of impacts may have changed over time. Probably one of the more interesting parts of this study is that it suggests that, that changes in the impact rate on the Earth and Moon have happened over time. And if they've happened over the last few hundreds of millions of years, they've probably happened even further back in time. And so scientists can take these, this, these kinds of studies and this information, and they can try to make connections. So is it possible asteroids were responsible for certain extinction events? Were they responsible for, let's say, changes in climate? or what was going on in different continents at different times. These are things that scientists can start to look at with more precision, the better we understand the record. And so the record on the Earth, while it's limited, um, at some level we can learn a lot by understanding the moon, going to the moon, and understanding what the impacts there tell us about our home planet.